Hi, I'm Rich Sains, and this is The Procurement Conversation. In this series, I've been fortunate to speak with inspirational young procurement leaders from different sectors, roles, and regions. By sharing their stories, we want more people to hear about procurement, including the leaders of tomorrow. Welcome to The Procurement Conversation, and this week, as part of our Young Leaders series, we're talking to Laurie Franquesa, who's Managing Principal at Argon & Co. Hi, Rich. So, Laurie, how did you get into procurement, and why didn't you end up doing something else? Yeah, actually, it's, I would say it's like by chance, really, because I'm like, my background is mechanical engineer. And basically, when I finish my studies, I have double degree, French university and Chinese university. I needed to do an internship to validate basically my double degree. But I didn't want to start as really a technical role. I could have gone to, I don't know, automotive industry, uh, do some drawings as a mechanical engineer. But I was very much interested in looking something a bit uh, broader. And I was interested like, yeah procurement supply chain and then I find uh, a role as like for a company uh, I was a consulting company uh, doing procurement uh, consultancy and then I just done the interview with people and I just love what they told me about procurement because at that time I didn't really know what was really procurement I knew yeah, I had some introduction at uni but like very high level and I just loved what I've heard from uh, their experience and then I started there as an intern and then basically gradually I moved through the company, so like junior consultant, senior consultant, project manager. And then I moved like also from country, started in the French office, then moved to the Chinese office. And now I'm based in the UK. And so it's just been like really a uh, great story for me. It's just really, I would say by, by chance, because I had no idea really what was procurement and I, I happened to love it because it's just every day is so different. And for me, procurement is really at the center of everything that the company is doing. And you have so much interaction with different people, different business function. And it's really, I see it really as strategic for the company and for business to, to work properly. So it's just, yeah, I started there. And then 12 years later, I'm still in procurement <laughs> because it's not boring. And every day it's a new challenge. So I just love it. And what does a normal day look like for you? Or is it a bit difficult to, to say? <laughs> No, no, it's actually so as I, I work in a consulting uh, firm, I have a team uh, of consultants working uh, usually with me on projects and so we work now post COVID, it's a mix of like remotely and also the client side. But if we are, it will be the same, but if we are like a remotely, every morning there's a daily catch up with the team, start of the day, making sure we align on the priority for the day, the week, ensure we are like, yeah constant alignment and uh, everyone is like one of the, the key tasks. And then during the day, it can vary. I can have like meeting with my internal key stakeholders or kind of meeting with suppliers. And the, those meetings can be around like, I don't know, it could be, for example, working or if we work on a specific tender for a specific category, reviewing like the, the documents, or it could be like preparing a negotiation strategy. And also there's like a part of my day, which is linked to a kind of PMO role because just to, to inform the clients or like where we are with the different initiatives, what are the status, bottleneck and like a, and also on the key priorities. So it's, yeah, it depends, but there's always like same structure, I would say very important aligning with the team. So internally and externally, my team internally, like my consultants, but also externally with the clients, making sure we are aligned and we can just progress the initiatives that uh, needs to be done for the week, for example. Is there anything you don't like so much? What I... I don't like uh, when uh, on procurement is maybe when we are involved uh, late in the process. I just think sometimes with some clients or within some companies, procurement is not, not always seen very positively and some business function, they prefer to own directly the process. And then at some point they realize, oh, actually we have a problem because yeah, they go over budget or they don't have the right, maybe a uh, supplier for the right service or the right product. And then they evolve for recruitment. Uh, but sometimes when it's a bit late in the process, it can be quite difficult to catch up on it and making sure uh, everything is aligned. So I think this will be like the main, main part where I get a bit sometimes frustrated because it's just so easier and simpler when you have everyone aligned from the start. You get like a good sponsorship from like the, the key people in the project. Then you can get everyone work together with the same goal. And if you are involved a bit late, it can be quite complicated to get everyone aligned around that. And as a consultant, are you generally brought in by procurement or by the business? And does that affect the level of engagement? Uh, we are sponsored directly by the CFO or the CPO. 
Uh, so it, it depends. And but there's always, and what we ensure is that there's always a good communication at the start of the project uh, to ensure that we are not there uh, to steal anyone jobs. Is basically we are here as like facilitator and basically to help to give a bit an extra push and to help the procurement team, for example, being more uh, mature or deliver delivering more initiative because there's, for example, uh, sometimes is because there's like strong ambition, there's a strategic plan, and they have an ambition for, for example, for this fiscal year to achieve specific amount of savings and we're here really to to give the extra push and to help but we are really positioning ourselves on we're going to be a member of the team working collaboratively with you and we're not here to take any of the credits basically and we like to sometimes we, it depends sometimes we are directly speaking and negotiating with suppliers but sometimes it's like more us like doing all the work in the background and then coaching the team and the team will do and deliver the negotiation, for example, with supplier. It's really like us making sure we are there to support you, but we're not here at all to steal your job. It's really like collaborative work and how we can make your life easier, basically. And for you to thank the credits, <laughs> this <laughs> is it. What would you say the key skills are that we need in procurement? The first one is it's really to be curious because in it can be and depends on like yeah, the type of categories you are, for example, responsible for. And it can be like a very different types. So currency is the first one. Uh, you need to be quite analytics. I would say good with data because it will help you being good basically at your, your job because the, the more data you have, the better you understand the uh, current needs and how basically procurement is here to how to, 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 to procure or to buy like the best service product that answer uh, the needs in the, the perfect way. So like the more data you get, the better it is. Also quite good with people. As I said, is because when you work in procurement, you need, you're going to be at the center of an ecosystem of, you have like a, your external key stakeholders will be like your, your suppliers, your partners, and then you have like your internal key stakeholders if you're in a procurement function. If you like working, for example, I don't know, on, on transportation, or probably your key stakeholder will be like from supply chain, logistics. So you need to interact with them. And then you have like also all the finance side of things with like when you are delivering some initiative, there's like a budget, there's some target, and then you need to make sure you're good with, with people because you can only be efficient if you get everyone along basically and they, they onboarded on the same project. How do you learn and develop yourself? That one I think is like with, for me, especially as, as a consultant, is with every client, every time is going to be a new sector. Sometimes it can be a repetitive sector, but often yeah, you have the opportunity to work across a variety of sectors. And as it's new, it's like what you're going to do to make sure you know this sector. So it's like doing a lot of research, reading, and so that you are credible, basically, in front of your clients. And even if it's a totally new sector, then how uh, you make sure uh, you are having in a short period of time good insights uh, that can be good uh, for your clients. So this is really something that I think is very important. And also the second part is around how do I develop myself is like with my colleagues and also my client is like making sure you're asking feedback. It's really so, that's something very important that yeah. it's always a good exercise because it's, it's not like a, about being critical because you can know where are your like areas you want to develop, but it's always good to hear from somebody external because they will always have good insights on how can you yeah, work in a better way. How can you improve yourself? So it's something we really like focusing on in my company is like making sure at the end of every project, we are like, we're asking some specific feedback to our client, but also you know, during the term of the project, we can ask just informal feedback and same from our team. And we do this the same. We are, I'm providing feedback to my team, but I'm asking my team to provide feedback too. It's very important. That this is the best way to, because to develop yourself, you need to know where you need to develop basically and people can help you. Finding those Very areas. Much. And mm. it's something that we, so as a practitioner, it's something we always used to try to do quite often is have a, mm. we used to call it a post-implementation review, PIR, you get to the end of the, yeah, the project exactly. and then you get that feedback from stakeholders. And I think sometimes there's a reticence to do it when you're an internal team, because obviously you well, want to work with that person maybe in six to 12 months time, and maybe they're not going to be as honest with you as, as they could be because you're going to work together again. But I think maybe as a consultant, you come to the end, it's obviously a paid piece of work. You get to the end of it and getting that frank feedback is really useful because then that, as you say, that that's something that helped you to grow. So I think it's yeah. always good 
even if it seems uncomfortable, it's always good to to ask for that yeah. feedback and get that feedback, isn't it? Exactly. And sometimes we are, when you're like a project manager and you are asking, some people are very comfortable. And as you said, others, they might not be comfortable providing a feedback. So what you can ask, sometimes we say, just do it like anonymously, or just like with a few, don't talk to me directly, talk with somebody else. And this person will just forward the message to me. And just we're just trying to find a way for people uh, being more comfortable because we should be all comfortable. Basically sharing feedback is not, oh no, you're doing a bad job. No. Is okay, you're doing this way, but maybe, uh, yeah, there's another way uh, we could work better because, yeah, you need to take into account that people are different, also different personality. Mm. And so uh, not everyone, there's not like one approach that fits all, right? And something that you do with one person can be very, very good. And another one can find this not working for this person. And you need to be aware of it, that maybe your management style is, is very appreciated by person A, but person B is not comfortable because you're doing this and this. And if you don't ask, you you will not know. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. And what what would you say you're most proud of? I think also the like two two sides of it. I would say like externally and internally. So externally is like yeah for for my client. I'm uh, really proud when basically we are delivering long uh, lasting results, showing that yeah we've supported the client in implementing a, a new solution and that are like been sustainable and that stays over time. An example is is one of actually my first project. It was around like packaging cost optimization. And basically we ended up like re redesigning the whole packaging. So like removing extra layer of packaging. And by doing that, basically we've optimized the whole supply chain because then the, it was like all board boxes that were like put on pallets and pallets were put in a, in a ship. And then thanks to the optimization of the packaging, we were able to stack the pallets, so save cost and time on the, the shipping fees, but also when like the product was delivered to the final client, save time because basically the packaging was much simpler. And uh, we basically optimized the whole supply chain. So there was like for sure uh, savings because there were less packaging. It was saving in time and also a more sustainable process because you have less waste and you have less containers because it was from basically China to France. So this type of things is like very, so oh, actually thanks to my work, there's been like a very positive impact on the company cost and also sustainability. And basically it was one, one of my first projects. And I, still, I don't know now, but at least like eight years after it was still implemented. So like the, and the solution was basically the, before we arrived, it was being done the same way for the last 20 years. No one has ever questioned it. And then we found this new solution and eight years later it was still there. So this is like very, I think very positive. And the yeah. second side, is I would say on the still the people side of thing and the colleagues to see when you see your colleagues developing through the project, being more confident, acquiring new skills, being more curious, like uh, training themselves, upskilling themselves, and then you see them being promoted. I think it's also very good rewards and like people being happy and developing in the right way within the company. And you say, okay, I've done something good there <laughs> because this is it at the end. I work with our colleague and. Uh, I want to make sure all of my colleagues are happy to work and yeah, happy with their job. Brilliant. Yeah, I think that's one of the great things about the first point you made there. It's a great thing about procurement where mm. we have that wider perspective and, you know, a stakeholder might be looking to do one thing in a particular area, but yeah. we, we can see the impacts across the organization and yeah, yeah optimize in, in a way that's slightly different than, than may, maybe they're doing otherwise. And yeah, the, definitely I, one of the things for me, is working with great people, really passionate people, and just seeing them getting better and better over, over the time right. you spend with them. That's, uh, yeah, that's definitely a good one there. Yeah. What would you say was your period of greatest growth? On that one, I think is because, so I left France to go to China, and after China, I came back to I mean, Europe, the UK. And I would say that, like, when I was in China, I really learned, because I was, it was a smaller office, and I was pretty much on my own. So really learn how to be more independent and basically do things by myself. And when I came back to the UK team, it was a very much different team than I had in France. And it was a great, there were like lot, lots of different skills. And I learned a lot from the team and from the project I, I've been put on at that time. It was basically a project where at the start I was more in a supporting role. So I was a project manager, but more like supporting. There was like, it was a big project. So I was supporting the program manager that we call in this project. And then step by step, because we stayed with this client, we stayed for, for a long time. And then step by step, I grew and I took more responsibility, more ownership 
within this project. And so it's been great because basically I started just yeah, being one of the persons supporting the project to be the one really completely being responsible and leading the overall assignment. So in that period, I really saw myself and took more responsibility. And so it's been really the greatest growth. So yeah, from coming basically from China to the UK. And then after that, really, I took another dimension, I felt. Looking ahead, where do you see procurement going? Oh, yeah, it's a good question. This one is like very, I think there's three, yes, three key areas. So there's still, I see one, I'll go quickly. So it's more like on cost efficiency, cost improvement will be, still be a one of the key topics in procurement. We're not only doing that, but yeah, it will still be there. There's still like lots of uh, geopolitical tensions, if we can call it. We have the impact of COVID. So we have inflation. So there'll be always a focus. I think procurement will still be a great tool to basically help company to basically improve so they can improve their mar- margin or even sometimes could be like the only way like to keep surviving. That's two way, right? Either you cut the cost of your people or you try to see, okay, what's my external spend? How can I optimize the cost? So I think it'd be one of the, the key things. But otherwise, the other two see that will really like change and take another dimension would be the kind of data analytics, AI uh, transformation. I think there's key things that as going to change. We still see now like there's lots of things happening. Is the start. So we cannot be sure exactly how it will impact, but I'm pretty sure it will be embedded like right in daily procurement activities over the next uh, few years. Could be like maybe improve and increase the transparency of uh, and the visibility of, of the spend, improve maybe predictability of forecasted spend so that we can be better at risk mitigation. I think it really will have a great impact and potentially also maybe be some tool to anticipate any market change so that you can have some competitive advantage for companies who have invested earlier in some uh, AI tool. So I think it's like AI will definitely be one of the hot, hot topics. And the last one is not the, I think it's probably the last one I want to talk now, but it's maybe probably the number one is sustainability. I think there's, there's now already a strong focus with lots of companies having their 2025 plan, but then there are also 2030 target. And I think it's just now it's become more and more obvious. All the companies now they start developing their like strategic sustainability, ethical or local sourcing. And I think it will become more and more a strategic and as part of every, every company, um, development, I think is, is not only about helping like how you make sure your supply chain, you know, all your suppliers are more sustainable, like with, for example, uh, carbon uh, reduction initiatives, but also it's like how basically you can help the whole uh, supply chain being more uh, sustainable as, because we know like that everyone is basically part of somebody else's supply chain. So it's like by improving uh, your carbon footprint reduction, carbon footprint, sorry, uh, you can not only improve your own, I would say, uh, yeah, footprint, but also the footprint of all of your suppliers, all those partners you're working with. So I really see that this sustainability procurement piece as something yeah, very important over the next the next few years. There's quite a few, yeah, I think out of those three, there's obviously mm-hmm. cost reduction, that's yeah, a continuing topic. Always. You've mm-hmm. got, mm-hmm. I think, ESG's, it's been, a, it's yeah. been a topic for a number of years, but obviously we're getting closer to these things, like, as you say, 2025, yes. 2030, mm. 2035, depending on what target people have set. And then you've yeah. got this whole digital transformation piece in AI. Mm. I mean, procurement's obviously already got a lot on its plate, and then there's a lot to do there. How do you think we're going to prioritize those those different areas you mentioned? Yeah. To prioritize, I think it would be, yeah, it's a good question. It would be like kind of part of the... I think the strategic plan of every business, right? Every company, I think they will have to prioritize, but they will have to go and to progress at least like I mean, AI, digital transformation, plus sustainability, ESG, will have to be on the agenda. You, see, you cannot not put those two key areas in your agenda because otherwise you're going to be too late. And if you don't do it now, then there's no, no more time to catch up. And I think all the companies have that clearly in mind. And so they have to find room to have those two topics in the key agenda and to have like people and maybe recruit and making sure there's like changes maybe in the organization 
Now you see that more and more often you have this ESG department that are created within each company. You have like this ESG policies. And then it's like how you make sure all the different functions also their words and can speak and procurement is one of those, but then you have ESG with finance, procurement, you have all the other functions that, that go around. And it's just that they, they will have to find a way, but yeah, it will have to be put, I think, and coming from the top. That is like part of the, the strategic plan from the company. If it doesn't come yeah. from the top, it will not happen. So it has to come yeah. from the top, no way. Yeah, definitely. I've seen that before where either you have a specific team that are responsible for that or yeah. you have procurement has that as one of its responsibilities but the issue where you, where you put it in a single team it's like actually it should be the organization's way of doing business the yeah. thing that i found was often people would go to that team and say you know it's almost like it's their responsibility to drive it and it's not it should be mm. everyone's responsibility to drive it so yeah there's always a bit of a as you say if it's coming from the top and it's like a, a strategic priority for the business then actually that's a better way of working than Exactly. putting it in, a, in a, an office in a corner somewhere and then no, <laughs> getting them to try and change things on their own yeah yeah it should be really embedded in everything they do i mm. think and so that is the best way for people to be aware and to make sure they are involved they are first they are aware of all those topics mm. and they are involved and if they want they can really like participate and be the key persons to to drive the change also within the company so I think it's like it's the most important, as you said, yeah. And it, the, because it cannot happen if it's just an isolated <laughs> office or there's somewhere uh, in the company, it's not going to work. It can only work like the whole company is involved. Definitely. Where do you see your career going? Yeah, this one, I think I still see myself working in the, it's been 12 years now that I'm in the consulting industry. And I think I'll still be there <laughs> for the next uh, few years. I think I still, yeah, I see myself like keep developing myself, learning with new clients, new sectors. And I think that, yeah, I'd like to maybe develop a bit more some expertise on those. We just discussed those new topics that are like AI and sustainability. I think having, developing some knowledge on those moving uh, will be key and be very interested. Like in deep diving, uh, those topics is still quite new for a lot of businesses and us as consultants, we're also learning at the same time. And it's just how we can support our clients uh, with their uh, business transformation being like yeah, in AI or uh, sustainability, I think would be the, the key things for me. And what advice would you give to someone who's considering a career in procurement? I think yeah, I would say that if you're basically curious, you like challenges, you like data, or you're keen to learn uh, how to use data and you want to do something that is quite different every day, Plus, you want to have like great interaction with a lot of different key stakeholders, internally, externally, different functions, then just do it. Like you won't regret it because it's every day, it's, it's a new story. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a never boring job. And how can we get more young people into procurement? I think what you're doing is a great thing. <laughs> Spread the <laughs> word. And because often, yeah, procurement can be seen, we just here to cut the cost or it can be just to be like transactional activities, but it's not only that, right? There's all the things around first on the desk, understanding the needs, the requirements from your business function, understanding the market and finding basically the best fit, right? Between a, a product service need and a partner to deliver this service or this need. So it's much more than that. So it's really spreading the word that procurement is a strategic function. And because, yeah, we are hear a lot about like yeah, supply chain, but basically as part of the supply chain, there's the procurement, the operation, there is procurement, which is key and it's at the center of it. And we need basically to try to change the, the view of uh, procurement, making sure it's seen as more strategic and as an enabler uh, for the whole company uh, and to deliver profitability for the whole company. So I think it's the, the key things. And yeah, like you're doing, you're spreading the word, doing post, making sure, uh, yeah, there's more articles and Showing also example of what, how procurement can support a company and how like, how procurement has been successful in achieving this or this for this company or how, what actually procurement did, uh, because sometimes people, they don't know, they just say, oh, you're just here to, to reduce the price with a supplier. No, it's not only that, it's just, it's much more than that, right? And it's yeah, working with supplier, co-designing, co-developing with them to make sure there's like the right solution for the company. So it's just like. Changing a bit the view of, okay, it's not like uh, procurement is not only here to cut the price. <laughs> it's much more than that. Brilliant. Thanks for joining us today, Laurie. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.
Thanks for listening. Do like and share and subscribe to hear the next procurement conversation.